And today I'm going to um, talk about uh, tomato potato psyllid, another uh, threat that um, yeah, we really don't want to, uh, to have spread to, to Queensland. But it is a, 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 a pest that is currently in Australia, um, having arrived in, uh, or been discovered in Perth in uh, 20, February 2016. Uh, happily, it's still currently uh, confined to West Australia, uh, but the chances are that uh, it may um, get over here um, at a reasonably soon date. So here we have them right there. And I'm just, before I get into that, I'm just gonna say though that you know, currently we, uh, as you know, the vegetable industry or the plant industries more broadly, um, we face a range of significant no uh, threats from notifiable pests from, from um, overseas. Australia is incredibly lucky to not have a whole range of plant pests and uh, diseases uh, in the country. And, and really what, I'm, what I would like to, to say is that uh, here are a range of, of plant uh, pests that have been recently intercepted uh, at the border uh, or, or uh, uh, after, closely after border uh, in Australia. Um, each one of these ones was, was contained, but um, you know, the threat is constantly there. You know, these, these things uh, such as the, the mite on the back of the um, European honeybee, the Varroa um, destructor was found in Melbourne. We've got Colorado potato beetles. We have the um, vegetable leaf miner there. We have um, giant African snails and of course, the brown marmorated stink bug, which has had multiple incursions in Australia, um, which has the potential to be a, a, a significant uh, pest across the industry. So, but let's turn to the tomato potato psyllid. It's a small insect. Um, it's just, you know, uh, it's basically the size of a uh, winged aphid, or does look like a, a very small cicada, two to three centimeters long. Now, it's a pest of multiple crops here. And as you can see, so, so here we have the host list. Primarily, it is the major pest of potatoes, but does impact a whole range of solanaceous crops, including tomatoes, capsicums, eggplants, and chilies. Now, interestingly enough, though, it also affects sweet potatoes. These are the, the crop host plants, but um, it also survives on a range of weed hosts. Primarily among these is, is nightshade and boxthorn, which is really important to know, given that, you know, if you're looking in, in your crops for the psyllid, um, it's important to know that these, these, the psyllids can survive, especially over winter, uh, in, in these weed hosts. Um, so that's, that's key to understanding uh, management if, if, unfortunately, we do have to start to um, deal with, with that. Um, where I come from, my background is uh, I worked in New Zealand at Plant Food Research for a number of years on this on this um, pest. What we would find is psyllids would would overwinter or survive in weed crops and then come into the newly sown um, summer summertime crops or springtime crops and establish populations and 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 really get out of control. So it's it's very much key to keep an eye on those of those non-crop weed hosts. So here we have it here. As you can see, the size is, is incredibly small. But what does what does uh, a distinguishing feature of it is this distinctive black uh, back 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 and a white band across across it. Okay, so that's that is a, a feature of the adult that uh, is worth keeping an eye out for. Now, when when looking for psyllids, uh, they the, they have a very strong hind legs. So basically, when when you're monitoring in a crop. If you disrupt the, the, the plant, the adults will spring up about a, a, a foot and fly off. So it makes um, monitoring for them reasonably difficult. So what I would recommend if you're looking for adults is to go to the edge of the crop, do not disturb the plant and, and look on the top side of the, the middle, middle, row, um, middle mid leaves um, and see if you can see anything there. If, if you do see something, it's a good idea to fold like a plastic bag or something over the top so that when it jumps away, you can um, capture it for um, analysis and take it to um, a local state government DPI for, for ID. What I would say though, is the best way to, to know or to, to monitor for psyllids is to look for the limbs. So the, 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 uh, the young have five instars or five growth stages. And as you can see here on the right, you've got the fifth instar uh, uh, nymphs uh, with the uh, uh, green coloration with a um, yellow um, uh, 
uh, wings, wing pads, uh, at, compared here next to an adult uh, silhouette. And as you can see, that distinctive white stripe. Um, these are, will be found on the underside of the mid-range of leaves um, and uh, won't uh, move or move away when disturbed. So that uh, is, is a good way of, of determining, um, looking for them. Now, if you do take a sample um, and, and, and please take it to your local DPI. Here we have the, the eggs. And as you can see, they're, they're laid around the, the um, leaf margin um, and uh, have this distinctive connecting cord. Do look a little bit like um, um, lace, lace worm eggs, but they are quite distinctive, um, even though they are very, very small. One thing that I, I encourage people to look for when, when, when looking for psyllids is to look for this, this uh, sugary substance on, on the leaves. Okay, so that's, a, that's a basically a honeydew, uh, waxy honeydew uh, sugar secretion that is the result of young uh, psyllid feeding. Um, and what basically is, is, as you can see, it's reasonably distinctive here uh, and um, is a good sign of, of psyllid presence. Um, Something else is, also happens is sometimes uh, sooty mold develops as a result of that. Another thing to look for is zebra chip symptoms. And this is why um, the tomato potato psyllid is, is ranked at, in the top 42 of uh, Australia's high priority plant pests. Basically what it does is makes, uh, uh, carries a bacteria that will um, make uh, potatoes unmarketable and do significant harm and damage, uh, distorting um, fruit and uh, uh, in other solanaceous crops. So as it stands currently though, the psyllid is present in West Australia. It has been found up as far north as Carnarvon <clears throat> and as uh, far east as Esperance. But, and this is really important to note, bacteria that's associated with it, Canadatus liberobacter solanaceae, which causes zebra chip, um, has not been found in Australia at all. Now, West Australia has been monitoring for, for this bacteria by testing thousands and thousands of, of psyllids over the past few years that they've collected from yellow sticky traps and have not found any cases of this bacteria. So I think we are very lucky. Coming from New Zealand, we got the bacteria at the same time as the psyllid, and that did significant harm to a range of our um, crop industries, um, and especially in terms of, of, of uh, vegetable crops. It's really important to know that it does cause stunting and distortion of fruit, so they they basically become unmarketable. So this is this is really where I'm going to finish up, um, and really just talk to you about what to look look for. Okay, so what happens is that from feeding high, high numbers of feeding damage, um, you get distortion, uh, um, wilting, okay, and um, and and stunting of growth, curling of leaves, yellowing um, of of leaf margins, and 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 as you can see here, some level of purpling as well. It's quite distinctive. Now, if there was um, CLSO or the zebra tip bacteria, that purpling would be highly distinctive, and basically. Uh, you'd see a stunted plant, but it would stand out from the rest of the crop because the psyllid does tend to congregate in one plant um, and, 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 and stay there and, and move only really when it's, when it's um, disturbed. Okay, um, the, uh, the results of, of having of psyllid uh, feeding is, is defective tubers, of course, as I've mentioned, as you've seen with those super chip symptoms and distorted and misshapen fruit. So basically, uh, and, and low yield. So significant problem. Uh, of course, on the top of that, there's additional management costs. Um, fully fully uh, believe in an um, integrated uh, pest management approach to management of the psyllid. Um, high use of, of, of broad spectrum insecticides will wipe out predators. And these psyllids are uh, capable of being preyed on by predators. So, so to work um, uh, uh, on a, uh, an integrated management system is, is, is really important. Um, to, to crop management. Um, but of, even with that, um, the additional spray costs and um, yield loss will be, will be significant. And of course, there is post-harvest treatment requirements for interstate movement potentially as well as another factor. And finally, there's international trade um, consequences as well. So that's, that's a, that in a nutshell is, is the psyllid. We have an Ausveg uh, tomato potato psyllid portal, which has dedicated industry management guides for different crops 
Uh, so we have potatoes when we have vegetables, nurseries, and so forth. And I really encourage you to, to go and have a look at that. Um, we'll provide a link to that um, portal uh, in, in the email, follow-up email. But there, there's a wealth of knowledge, uh, wealth of information, and, 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 and all the details about uh, what um, chemicals and, and, and um, beneficial control options are there. If you do see it, though, as, as Maddie pointed out, it's really important to call the exotic plant-based hotline. Um, so there we are. Let's um, happy to answer some questions in the, in the Q&A section. But now I'm going to pass you on to Andrew Turley. Thank you very much.